Good morning, and welcome to the worship of God here at Westminster. It is good to have you join us wherever you are today. We do invite you to share any prayer requests you might have over the Facebook feed, and those will be included in the service later today. And I also want to mention that at 1130, there will be a congregational meeting for the purpose of discussing pursuing a congregation revitalization grant. So that will occur at 1130 today, and that's available on Zoom. Um, information was sent out about how to be part of that meeting, and you can also check the church website for information on that. Let us be in the attitude of worship and unite in the call to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day when the Spirit came. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And again, we all say, rejoice. God is here as we, your people, meet to offer praise and prayer. May we find in fuller measure what it is in Christ we share. Here as in the world around us, all our varied skills and arts wait the coming of your Spirit into open minds and hearts. Here are symbols to remind us of our lifelong need of grace. Here our table, font and pulpit, here the word has central place. Here in honesty of preaching, here in silence as in speech, here in newness and renewal God the Spirit comes to each Here our children find a welcome in the shepherd's flock and fold Here is bread and wine are taken Christ sustains us as of old Here the servants of the servant in the worship to explore what it means in daily living to believe and to adore. Lord of all the church and kingdom in an age of change and doubt, keep us faithful to the gospel Help us work your promise out. Here in this day celebration, all we have to give and receive. We who cannot live without you, we adore you. If we say we have no sin, we are self-deceived and strangers to the truth. But if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us unite in the prayer of confession. Almighty God, you poured your spirit upon gathered disciples, creating bold tongues, open ears, and a new community of faith. We confess that we hold back the force of your spirit among us. We do not listen for your word of grace, speak the good news of your love, or live as a people made one in Christ. Have mercy on us, O God. Transform our timid lives by the power of your spirit and fill us with a flaming desire to be your faithful people doing your will for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. 
mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Through Christ, God has poured out the Holy Spirit upon us for the forgiveness of sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And as a forgiven people, we use these words from 1 Timothy to call us to faithfulness. But as for us, children of God, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which we were called and for which we made our good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give thanks to the risen Lord, hallelujah. We feel the rains of your love. We feel the winds of your spirit. And now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. We feel the rains of your love. Feel the winds of your spirit, and now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgate of heaven let it rain let it rain open the floodgates of heaven we feel the rains of your love we feel the winds of your spirit and now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear Feel the rains of your love, feel the winds of your spirit, and now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear, let it rain. Won't you open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain, let it rain. floodgates of heaven let it rain let it rain open the floodgates of heaven let it rain let it rain won't you open the floodgates of heaven Feel the rains of your love, feel the winds of your spirit, and now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear. Feel the rains of your love, feel the winds of your spirit, and now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear. Let it
let us unite in the prayer for illumination. God of power and grace, fill us with the wisdom of your word and the understanding of your spirit so that we may be your church, a people with dreams and visions at work in all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture lesson comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We read verses 1 through 13. The Apostle Paul addresses the church at Corinth and writes, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. And then turning to the book of Acts, we read from chapter 2, verses 1 to 17. When the day of Pentecost had come, they, all the disciples, were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. 
in the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Here ends the reading of the text. May God add his blessings to this, the reading of his holy word. And I do want to remind you that if you have a prayer request, that you go ahead and post it on Facebook, and we'll talk about those during our prayer time. Let us be in the attitude of prayer now. Let us pray. Gracious God, we seek your word this day. Amidst the world's turmoil, amid strife and fear and disease, may we find words of life and comfort and hope. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. In today's edition of the Chicago Tribune, editorial writer Clarence Page has this to say. As I watched the fires in the night leap skyward over Minneapolis and watched the protest marchers pour into other streets across the nation, I was reminded of the cities that erupted in flames a half century ago and wondered, what's changed? I still wonder. I was reminded of a still painfully relevant line from James Baldwin in the early 1960s. To be a Negro in this country and to be relatively conscious is to be in a rage almost all the time. We have seen the effects of rage in cities across our country. The picture on the front of the Trib was the picture of a police car burning in the city of Chicago. And most of us have seen news reports of what's gone on in Minneapolis following George Floyd's death. Well, his murder actually at the hands of police officers. It is troubling that we are here again, worried about excessive force and violence used by white police against black citizens. This is a real concern for our country and issues of race are real. We should not shunt them aside or assume problems are solved. We know that we struggle still with making sure that justice and fair treatment is available for all. So we start there with the reality of our world and the painful truth of our own society and its failures. We have to take action against this kind of event from occurring again. And even as we have said that so recently and often in current years, here we are again, facing the real consequences of uh, violence and the real consequences of those who would take advantage of the situation and perpetrate other violence on bystanders and businesses. It is a true tragedy of American life. Long ago, the disciples were gathered in an upper room in a section of Jerusalem that was known for um, housing folks that stood on the edges of Judaism. We believe they were quartered in the Essene quarter of Jerusalem. And this group was known for its own peculiar practices and approach to the law. And suddenly, these people, these disciples, gathered in this out-of-the-way place in Jerusalem, were given the power to speak across the divide of language and reach out to Jews that were gathered there for a festival in Jerusalem. They had the ability to speak, and people had the ability to hear what they said and understand that they were giving a message of great power about the work 
that God had done in the life of Jesus Christ. It was a truly miraculous moment for the disciples and for the early church as there was a great witness that Jesus had reached across the divides of language and of, of uh, culture and found a way to connect people of faith. The power of the Holy Spirit in this case is a remarkable, remarkable gift. And disciples that had been fearful and hiding out in the upper room suddenly found the power to be a missionary force that would see in just a matter of a few centuries uh, be the faith of the Roman Empire, be a faith that spread out not only in the area of the Mediterranean, but would eventually find its way all the way to China as the Christian faith just grew and thrived under the power of the Holy Spirit. It was a remarkable event and a remarkable witness to the power that God can work in the world. In the reading we had from 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul has been working with a church in conflict. They have all kinds of problems. They have uh, theological quarrels. They have problems about just how to be civil with one another. It's a church that also has doctrinal differences that sort of seem to uh, emerge and divide them as they uh, try to work out what they understand about the resurrection of Jesus. And in all of this, Paul is confident to say that God has entrusted you with powerful gifts, gifts that allow you to speak with wisdom about what it is that God has given to the world, gifts that allow you the touch of healing on other folks, gifts that allow your worship to be built up and your own understanding to be deeply increased. They are gifts that will reach across the great cultural divides of the Roman Empire of the day, and they will allow you to reach to one another in deep love. It should be noted that the early church had its share of major conflicts over the issue of culture and race. At one point, the biggest issue in the life of the church was what to do with the Gentiles. And of course, Judaism had struggled with what to do with the Gentiles for centuries. Many were attracted to the strong ethical stance of the Jewish religion. They were attracted to the worship of the true God. And there were even provisions made for them to have a place in the temple courts. But the church took another step early in its life and said, no longer do Gentiles have to become Jews first before they can become Christians. They don't have to adopt all customs, but instead, here's a list of three small things. And you should, well, not small, but they were important issues that helped uh, cement the church together under ethical conduct. This divide was breached by the power of the Holy Spirit. And while problems kept cropping up, somehow the early church managed to address those problems and move ahead. There is power in God's Spirit to reach across the great divides of our culture. There is a true power in love. There is a power in acting just the, justly. There is a power in the peaceful protest that we saw here in the city of DeKalb yesterday. There is a reason to speak out for justice, and we should. But having said that, we speak out in a way that reflects God's love, that reflects God's power, that seeks justice for all. 
That's the truth of it. And that's what happens on that Pentecost Sunday. God's power comes in remarkable ways, and not only does it bring a message, but it equips believers to do remarkable things. Now, having talked about sort of the heavy, painful issues of our culture, I'm gonna take a brief aside and share something I read in Reader's Digest. And these are about two new inventions um, that may be on the market soon. And one is an automatic tennis ball thrower that you can set up in your backyard for your dog. And it shoots a tennis ball up to 30 feet and your dog can get it, bring it back and learn to reload it and it will then shoot a tennis ball again. You just have to admire that kind of ingenuity. What, what a great, great gift. And you can imagine what the dog is thinking as it's running back and forth. Oh boy, I get to do it again. Uh, yeah, amazing, amazing thing for your pet. And just to make sure cats aren't left out, there's a drone that you can fly around your house that hangs this little thing with catnip on it that your cat can swing at as you fly the drone around. I can, it just sounds like so much fun. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe they'll invent a version for grandkids that they'll sort of run around, run off some of that energy and just chase this little string and ball or something. I don't know. I don't know. That. You can have that one for free. Good luck on uh, capitalizing on that one. We are people of remarkably diverse gifts who can come up with all kinds of inventive things. But sometimes the most basic questions of humanity seem to elude us. We should trust that God's Spirit is strong enough to help us address those kinds of questions to help us face those real issues with courage and sensitivity and do it in a way that brings honor to the people involved and to the God that we seek to serve. As Christians become an increasing minority in our society, a word about justice and peace and love from us becomes ever more important. These are real solutions to problems of estrangement and hate and bitterness. And unless we in the church embrace those solutions and become a place ourselves where these conversations can be held, it... Uh, well, it will be difficult for us to bear the witness to the world that we need to bear. James Baldwin, whom Clarence Page quoted, was uh, a black writer of considerable influence in the middle part of the 20th century. He spoke movingly and wrote powerfully about issues of injustice and segregation in the United States, even as he lived much of his life in Paris. And later in his life, he would take up the issues of justice for gay folks, as he himself identified as a gay man. He understood the importance of saying the truth and yet doing it in a way that finally did not estrange everyone involved. This is the conclusion to Clarence Page's column and he'll quote Baldwin once again. Justice should not be a question of black versus white in the true spirit of Martin Luther King Jr., we should come together across racial lines in pursuit of justice and a better future for all. We can begin with learning from our differences. I don't support everything Black Lives Matter leaders say, for example, but I also know 
that they aren't the agent of fear that right-wing pundits claim. Similarly, I know from a lifetime exp of experience that President Donald Trump's base supporters are not all Klansmen by another name. We may not always be able to work together, but it's always worth a try. That's why Baldwin's words come back. I know how it feels to hold a quiet rage almost all the time, but I also try to remember Baldwin's next line. So that the first problem is how to control the rage, he said, so that it won't destroy you. At which point Page adds and concludes his column with the words, or anyone else. As people given God's spirit of love and truth and justice, may we be an antidote to the world's rage and find ways to bring God's love and justice. All praise and thanks to God. To God be the glory. Amen. Today our affirmation of faith comes from a brief statement of faith from the PCUSA. Let us say together what we believe. We trust in God the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the Church. The same Spirit who inspired the prophets and apostles rules our faith and life in Christ through Scripture, engages us through the word proclaimed, claims us in the water of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation and calls women and men to all ministries of the church. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of people long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily task and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, Come, Lord Jesus. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we come to our prayers today, we have a prayer request for all NIU employees and for others that are losing their jobs because of COVID-19. Uh, there are prayers of thanksgiving for Joy Hadley as she only has one treatment left and has been doing very well. And prayers for Virginia Hadley as she has returned to Oak Crest after a stay in ICU and is recovering from pneumonia. There's a prayer request for our country. May all voices be heard and may there be peace and justice. There's a prayer request that a permanent food distribution solution will be implemented in our communities, our nation, and in our world. And prayers for our nation that in these difficult times may wisdom prevail. With these concerns in mind, let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray.
God of all might and power, we praise you that you forged your church in the fire of the Spirit and breathed life into your people that we might be the body of Christ. We rejoice that our Lord came to rescue us from sin and to deliver us beyond the grave to a rebirth and newness of life. By your Spirit, refine our hearts with your flame of faith. Fill us with the breath of zeal. Inspire us with the witness of martyrs and saints. And send us forth into your world to live Christ's life in power and compassion. Even as we have experienced Christ's love, we pray for those in particular need of a healing touch, of a word of comfort, of solace from grief. Hear us as we lift our concerns for those dear to us in the silence of our hearts before you now. Take us, O God, and shape us according to your will in the service of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I want to again say thank you to the congregation for their faithful support during these times. As we pause to think about the offerings that we give to God, both in terms of our time and treasure, uh, we seek God's blessing upon our decisions this day. Um, I also urge all of you who are part of the Westminster Congregation to return to us your pledge cards so that we can better plan for our programming for the next year. Let us now offer our gifts to God.
to the great one in three thy his praises be hence evermore thy sovereign majesty may we in glory see and to eternity love and adore let us pray Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Calling and free 
Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. And now, may the Lord of peace give you peace at all times and in all ways. May the grace of Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.